everyone, Alpha Soul here, and welcome to another video. Now, I thought this video would be pretty fun to do as uh, the Ashes of Creation Apocalypse is currently delayed. The open beta has been delayed, and, you know, as we're kind of waiting here for the servers to kind of go up, I figured it would be fun for me to just go through and rank what I consider, you know, the worst to the best weapons and armor that are currently within the Battle Royale. Now, I am primarily a solo player. I group with my guild, Hands of Fate, you know, occasionally from time and time again, but oftentimes I will solo queue up and wind up within a group. So a lot of my opinions are kind of tinged on this. And the other important thing to keep in mind is these are just my opinions. And I'll tell you why I believe, you know, these weapons rank uh, the way that they do. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and start off with melee weapons. Now, for melee weapons, at the very bottom of the barrel, we have the Rusty Axe. Now, the Rusty Axe is what you get at the very beginning. It's your default weapon, and it really doesn't do much. It doesn't have any special abilities, uh, it doesn't hit hard at all, and it swings uh, not too fast compared to some of the other weapons. So, it is just there. Now, almost every single time, you want to make sure that when you land, you are near either a chest uh, or some cache of weapons you can immediately pick up uh, and use another weapon. Now, the only scenario that I really recommend using the uh, Rusty Axe is A, if somebody is has landed next to you and they begin attacking you immediately. Even in that scenario, I typically recommend you to actually just use your dash and your roll to go find another weapon, turn around, and take care of the person. Uh, but there are some circumstances where you might, the first thing that you pick up might be a slow ranged weapon, in which case it's really hard to hit somebody as they're on you and even if they have a rusty axe. So in that scenario, that's pretty much the only one that I would ever suggest using the rusty axe. But outside of that, you know, you will never ever touch this weapon. It is by far the worst melee weapon at least. Now outside of the default rusty axe, uh, the next on the list that we have is the Essence Reaper, or it's the other axe, it's a two-handed axe. Now, the Essence Reaper, on, on the positive side, it does hit hard, and it does have a wide arc. It's got essentially an arc that extends kind of like that and claps uh, in front of you in order to cover what is in front of it. Uh, but the, the downsides to it are, one, it's incredibly slow. It takes a lot of stamina to swing, uh, and more importantly, its active ability, which is Mana Steel, is, is it's pretty useless. You don't really ever have a reason to Mana Steel. One, it steals a tiny amount of mana, but even if you did, uh, even if they did up it, taking stealing mana isn't really useful because when you kill a person you just get all their mana to begin with uh, and even if you were to steal all of their mana um, it really wouldn't limit them too much in combat as at that point if they're that up close to you they're probably going to be using a weapon that doesn't require mana so mana steel is you know arguably the worst active ability that's in there and for that you know essence reaper is really um, outside of the rusty axe the worst weapon that you can pick up now, next on the list is the Great Sword of Haste. Uh, now, even though it's next on the list, it's not it's not terribly bad. It's got a decent hit, uh, it's got a decent hits, you know, box, if you will. Uh, it has haste on hit, which is the active ability, which is actually really nice. Now, haste on hit, when used properly, uh, you can hit somebody real quick and kind of joust with them, uh, move out of the way, switch to a, a medium range uh, ranged weapon, and use that kind of against them, and employ all sorts of different tactics. But in general, to use it properly, it does take a lot of you know multitasking and skill usage to use. Uh, now, it is nice if somebody is running to also chase down somebody with the haste because you hit them once and they're basically not going to get away with you and you don't really have to expend any stamina doing lunges or doing things like you know the jump attack and things like that uh, so it is nice in that respect but it's got a slow swing uh, so it's got that you know same recovery issue and again it's very situational you know amongst that so uh, you know uh, so next on that list obviously is the great sword of haste now, the next weapon on the list is actually the Still Blade. Uh, the biggest strength of the Still Blade is its active ability. It has an it, the snare or slash snare slash root on the weapon is really good. And it's really useful for countering things like catfall boots, uh, for preventing people from running away, or even snaring them so you can go ahead and switch to a medium range weapon and handle them that way. It's, it's an excellent counter to uh, a lot of weapons and it's a great weapon to pair uh, with other ranged weapons that would prevent them from moving, like Fire Frost, for example, or the Potion Launcher. It's a lot easier to hit them if they're moving 
being very slow or not moving at all. Uh, so still blade is great in that respect. But uh, the downside obviously is again, it's situational. You kind of have to combo it with other things in order to be really effective. Uh, it doesn't really hit that hard, uh, but you know, it, it is what it is. So the still blade lands right there. Archmage's Companion is the weapon that I would consider right at the middle way as far as melee weapons. Uh, it has an excellent lunge. It seems to produce a range that is really good for the lunge. The blast effect is nice for kind of disorienting people. It doesn't do that much damage. It's like 15 damage, but, uh, you know, it's nice for disorienting people. The swing uh, is deceptively fast. It's you, know, you can do it in quick succession where, you know, you whack them a couple times and it'll do a decent amount of damage uh, and, you know, if not, take them out of the fight, which is really nice for it. Now, the downsides of this weapon is while the lunge is good, the actual swing range is actually pretty low. You almost have to be standing on top of them in order to score a hit, uh, which does make it kind of weird to actually use for it. So it's it's pretty easy to avoid if you're on the other side, if you're just careful uh, with how you position yourself and employ your roles and all that good stuff. Um, so, but I think it generally is, you know, the medium range weapon. And generally when I get it, I probably will keep it uh, until I find one of the better range weapons. Next one here on this list is the Lifebringer. Now the Lifebringer for the longest time, it seemed like for a couple months, it was the strongest weapon that you could go ahead and use. And there were many reasons for it. One, the hit is really strong. Uh, you know, it's it's got a good amount of range too. It's like a pole arm. So uh, when you use it, it's, you know, it's got a good amount of range. You don't have to be right up on them. It's got a great lunge. Uh, and the lifesteal, or the active ability, is really good and restores a good amount of health. Uh, and with the meta that was currently in, it was really one of the only ways uh, that you could restore health because potions were so few and far in between. Now with the recent patch uh, that has hit and that we've kind of been testing, it seems like the up... Uh, the frequency of potions has changed drastically and they're much more available. Uh, and as such, that's one of the reasons that it's kind of fallen out of favor. Uh, and there have been some bugs basically with the life steals uh, active ability where it actually doesn't steal your health or steal health from it. So uh, all of that kind of, you know, brings it down. It used to be the best weapon. It's no longer, uh, but it still is a pretty decent and solid choice. Spirit Pierce is next on the list. The Spirit Pierce is the spear. Uh, the stamina steal is strong. Uh, and the reason I say that is when you get uh, one or two hits off the stamina steal, outside of the damage, uh, that usually means that the person that you're fighting against has one less swing to actually work with for the time being. So it's very e it's, it's a lot easier to pin them down and to reduce the damage that you take and reduce the chances that they have in order to kill you. So uh, it has actually gone up in value in the past or you know in, within the past patch and it, it, it really is a really nice weapon. It's got a good lunge and it's got great range as well too. Um, and so yeah spirit piercer I would place right there. Now, the second best weapon, in my opinion, is the Thundering Mace. Now, the Thundering Mace is uh, one to me that is highly underutilized, but I love it because it's allowed me to score some kills on people in groups and really quickly get out of there. Now, the real big benefit of the Thundering Mace is how quickly it actually hits and more specifically how it's actually hitting. So it's not uncommon for uh, for you to, you know, kind of go ahead and swing a couple times and that so those swings happen in the span of like a second or two seconds and all of a sudden it's registered like 120 150 damage uh, that you've done it does deceptively high damage in a fast in a, in a really short amount of time which is why i place it so high up on the list and it has uh which is why i really like it now the downsides and what makes it tricky for using this is the fact that it's got really short range it's along the lines of uh, you know, the uh, Archmage's Staff, the, uh, what is it, the Still Blade, it feels like it's got short range for it, uh, and you really have to be hugging up on them to get it. Uh, and the other bad thing about this weapon is the lunge is not good on this as well. Uh, it's got a much shorter range than some of the other lunges, so it's kind of tough uh, to close the gap, if you will. So this is a type of a weapon that I like to employ after, as I'm ambushing somebody, if I just run up to them and immediately start hitting them with it, and uh, it'll do a fair amount of damage. And I often switch to another weapon that has a higher lunge or something of that matter. But to me, Thundering Mace is second best. And the best weapon, melee weapon, currently within the game, to me, is the Bone Smasher. The Bone Smasher is the two-handed mace. 
this the mace hits like a train first and foremost it hits really hard now the swing is slow for it but it makes up for the really good q ability or the really good active ability that it has uh which is a hemorrhage now the hemorrhage what it does is on hit it applies a dot or a damage over time that damages you as you move so uh, if you stay still the dot won't do anything but if you move you take damage now it's recently been nerfed so that you take five damage per tick it used to be 10 damage per tick which was really good uh but now it essentially leaves the person that you're fighting with a choice if you run by and you hit them they're either gonna have to decide to not move in which case you whip out your range weapon and hit them with the range weapon really hard or they're gonna have to move retreat do other something else uh in which case you can still hit them with a range weapon or reclose the gap in and do it it forces them into really bad choices and to be honest if you score the first hit of a bone smasher chances are if that person is solo against you they're probably going to die it's really difficult to counter uh the bone smasher on it so uh, yeah, it's it's just something of note that I've noticed, but the Bone Smasher really is, to me, right now, the best melee weapon that you could actually use. Uh, now, again, it's got a slow speed, it's got a slow swing for it, but uh, it doesn't outweigh the benefits that this actually brings to the table. Now, let's go ahead and talk about ranged weapons, but before we talk about ranged weapons, let me just really quickly clarify what hit scan and projectile or projectile is. Hit scan essentially means if you place your mouse uh, cursor on somebody and you click, it will register the hit immediately. Whereas projectile, if you place your mouse cursor on somebody and click, you're going to see if a ranged you know, item kind of go across towards it and it'll register if the target is still in the location that it is. So with the projectile, you usually have to lead, kind of predict where somebody is. Whereas with hit scan, it's just C click, C click. All right. So with that out of the way, let's start with the very first one. Uh, the worst weapon, ranged weapon currently, in my opinion, is the Wand of Light. Now, the Wand of Light used to be the best weapon that you could get, period. Uh, it used to fire really fast, it used to do a good amount of damage, uh, and you could dispatch people really quick with it. Now, the Wand of Light has received significant nerfs. It no longer fires as fast as it was. Um, and, you know, it basically I would characterize it almost as slow attack speed at this point. It's not a hit scan, it is a projectile, and the projectile does seem off. I have a lot of trouble hitting people with the current version of the Wand of Light. I never used to have that trouble before, uh, so I, I think something changed unless I just somehow got worse, but uh, that's just my opinion of it. And like I said, the projectile is hard to land. The active ability is okay. It puts a beacon of light around somebody, uh, and you can kind of see them as they hop around, but... Uh, you know, it. Uh, outside of that, it's really lackluster, and to me, it's the worst weapon out there. The next weapon on the list is the Rifter. The Rifter is a really situational weapon that's there. Uh, it's it, it has a homing mechanism that will home in and do damage. The damage that it does is really low, though, and really isn't surprise. Or, you know, really doesn't surprise anyone at all. Uh, the the weapon in general is good against people who are using catfall boots. For one, it's really easy to kind of home in and you know hit them with it. Uh, and the active ability. It's situational, but it has the potential to be really good. Specifically, you can quickly use the active ability. The active ability, what it does is it swaps positions with whoever you target and hit. So basically what you can do is if somebody is running away and your teammates are chasing them, you can tell your teammates, hey, about to hit the active ability. You hit it, swap them out, and they can quickly just maul down the person to death. Uh, you know, you can use that same tactic in groups. It kind of uh, makes it really disorienting. It makes it really easy to score a quick kill because a lot of times before the other team figures out what's happening, you will have swapped and killed that other person and you can kind of reposition and flank them and do all sorts of fun stuff with it. You can also, and um, DJ Phantom was one who did this and he's got a video of it up, uh, up and running. You can swap them onto a tall tower, for example, and they'll fall to their death or something of the sort. And it works, it works really well for it. Uh, but again, it is situational and in one-on-one -on -one fights, it's really not useful at all uh, for that purpose. So 
Um, although it should be interesting to try things like the Bone Smasher uh, and, you know, hit him with the Hemorrhage and then run away and then swap and see if it actually registers the damage as they swap positions for a potential insta-kill. I've, I've been wanting to try that, but I haven't gotten a chance to yet, so it'll be interesting to see if that actually works. Uh, but anyways, yes, the Rifter lands on that. Next on the list for ranged weapons is the Fire Frost Potion Launcher. Uh, this thing hits hard. You can reach areas to hit around corners that other weapons cannot do. Um, I haven't really used the active, to be perfectly honest. And to be uh, perfectly honest, I haven't even really noticed the active just because every time I get the Potion Launcher, I start thinking of bouncing the thing, bouncing the potions off of things and going around. So, you know, um, it is what it is. But... The problems with the Potion Launcher is direct hits, if they haven't bounced, uh, bounce off of your target. Uh, and you can also kill yourself pretty easily if you're not careful and you use it in an enclosed space. Uh, in general, it is, it's nice for getting people to think and to move and to kind of set up the battlefield, but other than that, for doing real damage for killing people, it's not really the greatest of weapons. Uh, so yeah, Potion Launcher is there. Now, the middle range weapon that we have is the Crossbow of Revealing. Now, the Crossbow of Revealing is right smack in the dab in the middle. It hits decent. I personally feel that its targeting reticule is just slightly off. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a projectile thing and it, you know, kind of moves, but it just doesn't seem to register hits as, you know, as, as what I would expect uh, with some of the other range weapons does. Uh, but the reason why it's higher up on the list some, than some of those others is its Q ability. Its Q ability is really nice. It's What it does is it's a reveal. So if you fire it in a certain area, everything that's within that area will be revealed. So it's nice to see positioning of players. If you know somebody is in a building, you fire the boat, uh, the crossbow bolt of revealing there, and you can kind of see them run through and you can plan your attack and, you know, go for them from there. So for that ability alone, it's sometimes nice to carry around a crossbow of revealing just to have, and you can use it against other things like, you know, if they're hiding behind rocks, all that good stuff. Crossbow of revealing, definitely there. Now, Grimoire of the Fallen Sky is next on the list. Uh, this is the book, the spell book, essentially. You don't have to be all that accurate in order to hit with it. It does a nice big range AoE uh, that hits, and it does really nice. Um, does decent damage with respect to that. Um, and it's great for attacking people that are within buildings or hiding behind cover. You just fire at their cover and it'll register damage basically at them. And it's really nice for that. Now, why there are some downfalls to it? One, it's got a really slow cast time, right? If you have it and somebody is closing in on, me on melee with you, you probably want to switch to something else really quickly because they will take you down really quick. Um... The active does not seem to be all that good. Uh, it has this chaos meteor that causes other meteors to kind of jump out, but, you know, it really doesn't do that much. Um, you can kill yourself with this weapon, so be very careful if you cast it really quick. Uh, and the final point is it's easy to dodge. Um, you know, if as you're about to be hit, if you're paying attention, uh, then you can quickly, you know, hit on the dodge and roll out of the way, even if it's all the way on you. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's it, it can be avoided pretty easy, but it is nice for setting up uh, other hits and using for extreme long range combat and flushing people out of buildings. Now, the second best weapon, in my opinion, is the Longbow of Miasma for ranged weapons. The Longbow of Miasma is, I think, the hardest hitting weapon in the game. Uh, now, it has been nerfed. I I'm not sure the extent of the nerf, but you can still one-shot people with the longbow pretty easily if you line up a headshot. Uh, earlier, before the nerf, it was doing some ridiculous damage around, I think it was like 250 or something like that for a fully charged attack to the head, uh, or even a little bit more, but basically there's no chance you can survive that, even with full armor uh, and full health. Uh, so, it's a really nice weapon. Uh, to use specifically when it's, you know, uh, late in the game, for example, and people are hiding, everyone's kind of trying to figure out where they are. If you can spot where somebody is and line up a headshot with the longbow of Miasma, you've just scored an easy kill and it's really easy to use for that matter. So uh, I, I, really do, I really do like using it and I often switch to it if I've done something like a combo with the, he with the, um, 
if I've done a combo with the Bone Smasher and the my opponent isn't moving, uh, this is one of the weapons that I will switch to and immediately fire at them. Won't even try a headshot, I'll just fire at them because it hits so hard uh, to score extra damage. Uh, so yeah, excellent in that. Now, uh, the downsides to this, the poison or the miasma field really isn't that good. Uh, most people can get out of the, my, uh, the poison field before they register any damage. Um, it's, you know, it's, and it's also got a slow recharge uh, for the actual firing rate. So, uh, yeah, long bullet my ass, to me, it's still the second best we range weapon that you can carry around. Now, the best range weapon, in my opinion, is the Nightfall Bow. Now, the Nightfall Bow has many good advantages to it right now. Uh, one, it's a hit scan. It's the only hits, true hit scan range weapon that's there, meaning if you put your mouse cursor on somebody and you click, it'll register the damage immediately. So it's a great weapon to use uh, almost in any range, except for when they're really close up to you. So long range, mid range, mid range combo, excellent bow to use. It's also an excellent bow to use because of the fact that uh, you can easily Easily combo it with other items. You can pair it with, you know, the Bone Smasher, get a hit, you know, immediately switch to range. You can dodge out of the way, quick switch to range, try and score a quick hit. Uh, it can be used in those situations, interchanged really nicely, really quickly, and does really well. Uh, now, the Darkness ability as well is a nice ability to have on the bow, and it, it generally tends to flush people out. What I really like doing is if somebody is in a building, I'll throw the Darkness bow in there, and it's really hard to actually go in and hit somebody with it. Uh, now, another tactic that I like to use is if we're both in a building and somebody is there, I kind of get the general sense of where they are, uh, and what I'll do is I'll darkness so we both can't see and immediately switch weapons and lunge in the direction that they were to score a hit or two. Uh, so the darkness, uh, you know, it's a good flush out ability, it's a good cover ability to go ahead and use, uh, you know, as you're kind of going about things. Now, the downside to it is you can't see in the darkness, so you really kind of have to be rolling dice and hope they don't completely, like, go somewhere else, you know, as you're using darkness. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, if you're against somebody composed, darkness is not going to phase them. They're just going to, you know, they're going to be really calm. They're going to dodge out of it uh, and be, you know, uh, it won't really affect them that much. Uh, and finally, the recharge rate for the bow is actually pretty decent. Uh, and in combat, the recharge rate, it forces you to recharge if you're out of shots, uh, can be pretty onerous. Uh, so you just want to be careful if you're using uh, the bow for like mid-range combat, for example, and you know you're kind of jousting with somebody, and you immediately have to be in charge, uh, or you immediately have to recharge. You'll notice your character will hold the bow up to the sky and just sit there with it for two or three seconds. I think it's something like that. I forgot what the exact recharge was, but yeah, it is what it is. It still is the best range weapon in my opinion at this point. Now let's go ahead and move on to the chest armors. Uh, now we're just going to be talking about the active ability for both the chest and the legs, uh, and that is what they are ranked on, so let's just go ahead and get started. Now the breastplate of the Bulwark is uh, the worst chest one that there is out there, uh, bar none. The only real use that you could use the Bulwark for right now uh, is really blocking off an entrance to either prevent somebody's escape uh, or to cover your escape. Like if you're running, you run into a building and you don't want someone to follow you, you hit the bulwark and they can't run past it. But outside of that, uh, it's not really too effective. Even I've tried using it a couple ways. I haven't really seen anyone use the bulwark well. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I think it's going to be more useful for castle siege and for horde mode of the like. Uh, but right now, it's, it's kind of useless. Breastplate of the Dark Pact is next on the list. This used to be arguably the strongest armor that there is there because its ability. Its ability used to, or what its ability does is negate the damage from the closing in field or from the death field that's closing in on the battle royale. Uh, now, right now it's a percentage that it reduces, which is a nerf from what it was before. Before it was total immunity. Uh, so the meta was everyone would try and last until the very end and save up as many dark packs as they possibly could uh, and just go ahead and, you know, pop their dark pack, wait for it to run out, switch armor to the other dark pack, and then, you know, uh, use another dark pack and then just keep going and chaining until everyone died except for the people with the dark pack. And it was kind of out of hand, so it was understandable how it changed, and they changed the percentage. Now... Even if you if you try to do it, you'll still die because you're still losing health, and you're still losing health at a pretty good tip. I think you, I think the latest calculation was you would last with the dark pack maybe five seconds uh, within, if assuming you were at full health, 
full armor, you would last like five seconds or, or less. I forgot what it was, but it's not really that useful anymore, um, you know, outside of just barely preventing death in the very beginning. The second best breastplate we have is the Polymorph Breastplate. Uh, now, Polymorph Breastplate is really good for somebody who is running around solo. Uh, it's a really good way to hide and bide your time till the end, uh, and really does a good job on that. Um, it's a good item to use when running away. Now, you have to be a good distance away from somebody to effectively pull it off. And the reason being is the polymorph makes distinct sound. And once you've done it, they know you've polymorphed and they're looking for you. So, uh, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's better if nobody is around you and you're just biding time to either set up an ambush or you're biding time to, you know, just wait until the end of the game. So uh, it's good for those uses. Now, uh, again, I mentioned the it's it has an easy recognizable noise which is a problem but the other major problem with the polymorph breastplate that happens at times is depending on where you use it sometimes it, it tur randomly turns you into an object and sometimes that object will make no sense where it is like it'll make you into a chair when you're sitting out in a field uh i'm not quite sure how it works i think there's some mechanism that takes uh, from the environment what everything else is around and it somehow comes to the calculation from that because I've seen Sometimes it work really well like if you're in a house you'll turn into a chair uh, or some boxes or something like that So it really is kind of random at this point of what you'll turn into but uh, it's the second best chest armor and the very best chest armor, in my opinion, at this point, is the Invisibility Aegis. Uh, it turns you in invisible. It's not true invisible. If you've ever seen the movie Predator, it's just like that. It's kind of like this uh, translucent-ish shape that you can kind of see the shape moving. It's a really cool effect, uh, but if you don't have, like, eagle eyes, uh, you won't be able to spot someone from afar. And you can, if you, if you get used to the look, you can actually tell that somebody's moving around, but you really have to be looking for it and they really have to come into your field of vision. But it's an excellent method to set up ambushes, to get away from people. So both offense and defense, it's a good armor to use. Uh, the, the biggest downfall for it is it's got a long cooldown, but other than that, excellent item all around. And finally, let's move on to leg armors. Uh, leg armors for it, at uh, first, uh, worst, we've got the Boots of Arcanic Power. Now, what it basically does is it does a small knockback charge effect that does a little bit of damage and knocks you back. The knockback isn't significant enough and the damage isn't significant enough as well, so it's, you know, just mediocre at best. I, I much rather it would be with the other items or the other boot items that are here. The Boots of Icy Stepped are next on the list. Uh, they are great items for, it's it's a great pair of boots for slowing enemies. Uh, basically, it creates an ice trail around you uh, or, you know, in your footsteps. So it's nice to use if you grab a melee weapon, throw on your boots and start jousting with them and start hitting with them and, you know, moving around. You've got your automatic trail that makes it difficult for them to move and go around because it slows them. So it's, it's a really nice on that. Now, it's not a good weapon to use if you're planning on trying to run away from somebody, only because, sure, it's slows them but it leaves a nice bright white trail to you so you can't really lose them if you will they know exactly where you are uh and it's really only good for temporarily slowing them on that matter so uh yeah it is what it is the second best boots that we have here are the blink boots they are good for chasing, they're good for putting distance between you and your enemy, from hopping from building to building, they have a fast recharge time, overall very very solid weapon, uh, or solid armors, uh, seriously, when used properly. Uh, not really any major downfalls with the boots, um, only that, you know, you might just, uh, for range combat I guess, you really wouldn't use them too well, uh, only because, you know, really easy to see on the horizon, but, uh, you know, it still is a very decent option for your boots. And finally, the best boots still, despite the nerfs, are the Catfall boots. The Catfall do boots do a number of things. Now, the first thing that they do is they silence your movement, right? Uh, I'd say about half of the time that I recognize that somebody is close is because I hear them. The other time is because I see them. So sound is a big thing in this game. It's very directional. You can see hear where they're coming from, uh, so it matters. So the Catfall boots are nice to use if you're entering a building uh, and you want to chase someone down. They'll be alerted by your steps, but if you use Catfall boots, they will not be alerted by your steps, and you can sneak up on them, get the drop on them, and make it, you know, uh, a quick match, if you will. 
Um, they allow you to access hard to reach places because the other benefit for the boots is they allow you a jumping ability. Uh, now, I think the ability has been nerfed quite slightly. Uh, the length or duration of the catfall boots has been nerfed as well, uh, but I'm not quite sure what the extent is. But from what I've seen so far, they're still probably the most solid boot option that you can go ahead and get. Uh, and they're also a good defensive maneuver. Now, uh, the last thing that they do is they actually prevent fall damage. So if you get stuck up on really uh, somewhere really high uh, and you need to get down, best thing to do is just drop off, use the cat fall boots, you're perfectly fine. Now, the downfall to it is as melee combat has gotten better, the catfall boots really put you in a vulnerable position as you're jumping because uh, as the person starts seeing you jumping, you can easily time where they're going to land and you can even hit them in mid-air as they're going for pretty easy shots. So um, if you're up against the wrong person cat, and you use the catfall boots, it can pretty much spell death if you're not careful. So uh, just be careful with how you use them. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's my take on you know, kind of my rankings of the current weapons and armor within the game. Now, obviously, all of this is subject to change as they make their uh, changes and additions, but I thought it would be fun to kind of talk about it before uh, the open beta is released, so you guys kind of have a barometer of what weapons are out there, and, you know, find your own style. If some of these weapons here work better for you, you know, by all means, go nuts with it, all right? So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys. Let me know what your thoughts are on some of the weapons in the videos, uh, or some of the weapons in the Battle Royale, and that's pretty much it. Thank you guys. Take care of yourselves, and you guys have a great day.